Howdy to week seven of our Weave and Stitch Along. This is Gabi and I would like to welcome you to another hopefully fun session where we will uh, learn some new embroidery stitches. And today's embroidery stitches are the satin stitch and we will also do some couching. Let me briefly explain to you what I mean by that. First, here is an example from a uh, satin stitch that um, this is a, a little tunic or a blouse that I made when I was a teenager. And yes, you can see this is like, you guess right, I was a teenager in the 70s. And so most of this blouse is, let me hold this up a little bit. Most of this blouse is satin stitch. And you can see here what the satin stitch does. It really covers whole areas. And here is a variety of satin stitches where the stitches are a little bit feathered or making these little dots. Um, I will tell you a satin stitch is not one of my favorites. Um, and if you like this one, you probably even more like this one here. This is a blouse that my uh, mother embroidered in satin stitch. And uh, yeah, this is much more relaxing to look at and uh, much more delicate in the details, if you can see this right here. So this is what satin stitch really, in my opinion, should look like. Anyway, we will take a uh, look at the satin stitch today and there is a story to it um, when i first asked if people are interested in doing a uh, weave and stitch along um, one of our moderators on our facebook group pindoom uh, weaving support group um, posted a picture and said well yeah i'm i love uh, doing embroidery uh, on looms and here's an example and so she posted a picture of this little owl and I just could not get this cute little owl out of my head so I asked Amber um, if uh, she would grant permission that we use exactly this little owl for our, uh, for this session in our uh, weave and stitch along and she said yes and over the last several weeks we have been working on turning Amber's idea into something that we can teach in our weave and stitch along. Uh, more about this later, let's do our show and tell first. And here are a few pictures from the last two weeks. Can we please zoom in? All right, this is still a little bit tiny, but I think you can see it. Um, one thing today, I want not just to show you pictures of the last couple of weeks, but I also want to say thank you for all the excitement and the fun that we have been sharing over the last almost two months. And here is a little story from Hazel. Um, <laughs> For those of you who missed the Hazel story over the last two weeks, this was because she went to a show. But shortly after she returned from the show, uh, she caught up with the things that she missed. And here is, uh, first of all, our week four design uh, with the back stitch. And when she posted it, I thought, wow, this is really pretty. And um, it reminds me very much of uh, one of my favorite porcelain uh, patterns. It's, it's a traditional pattern. The German name is Zwiebelmuster and I googled it. It's called uh, onion blue in English. Uh, so I said, wow, this, this, this is really very pretty and it reminds me of this Zwiebelmuster um, except for the onion. And um, you know Hazel or those of you who do know Hazel, uh, within an hour she posted this little picture and so you can see here uh, she made me a little onion for my Zwiebelmuster. So thank you very much Hazel. Uh, it was a big laugh. Um, I just thought this was really very very cute. 
uh, more laughter this week. And I want to show you here uh, one of the first J's in cross stitch. Um, this is from Susan. And again, this comes with a story. Susan posted on Ravelry that um, she was watching the video, the cross stitch video from uh, week six last week together with her dog. And her dog got very excited about it every time I, on the video, said J, because Susan's dog is called, his name is JJ. So uh, JJ had a great time, and Susan turned this into a square uh, that has his name on it, JJ. And then she went ahead and added a little picture, a little dog picture for JJ on her square. So thank you for the laughter, Susan, and thank you, JJ, and a big wolf and a big milk bone um, in this video just for you. Uh, here is another uh, uh, cross stitch square from Carolyn from week six. She apologizes a little bit that the lighting conditions are not perfect. And this is because uh, she was embroidering during a typhoon uh, in Taiwan. The, the typhoon Maria, she, they didn't get hit, but um, she definitely had plenty of rain and it was pretty dark. She was well prepared and she was safe, but she shared her story with us. And thank you very much, Carolyn, for doing so. Um, and she made this very pretty D in cross stitch. Uh, and you see a little bit here that she is using variegated yarns. And I think this is a great example that shows if you just keep on uh, your doing your regular stitching with a special yarn, it, makes, it can make quite interesting effects. And then she decided to add a little pumpkin over here um, because all the, the, her color scheme is in these fall colors. Now, the pumpkin was another reason to cause laughter. Somebody said, well, it looks like an apple to me. And then somebody on another forum said, oh, I thought these were, this was a cherry. So uh, laughter, we all agree that it's some type of plant. Um, I think Carolyn confirmed it is a pumpkin. And it probably becomes a little bit more obvious if you take a look at this beautiful picture here. This is the same square that we just looked at from Carolyn, but she also started making extra squares for her table runner. And look at those beautiful brown shades, how they support the color scheme that she chose for her embroidery. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing her work on that table, um, table topper starting next week. All right, last not least, no, it's not last not least, but here is uh, Marcia. And Marcia um, has a very interesting combination of colors and, and designs. Uh, we have the, the big M on a pink fabric, and then she has this uh, peace sign here that I think turned out quite well. So she sent me a message first and said, what do you think? Is that okay? And absolutely this is okay. Very, very creative. And then she also shared uh, that she has been using graph paper to lay out and design her uh, her little piece and her M. And this is like, hey, that is perfect and so worth mentioning. You don't have to just copy what you see online, but if you are creative like Marcia, grab a piece of graph paper and just uh, go to town with it. Remember that here on the square, you have the 31 by 31 and maximum um, uh, available. And I do suggest that you leave a small border all around. Uh, the same is, is for the for the hexagon loom, uh, but other than that, go to town and make your own designs. This is a great idea, and you know if you use a pencil and an eraser, you can you can fiddle around until it works for you. And I think Marcia definitely provides an excellent example where uh, it has been successful. Well, talking about success, I have um, one picture here that to me 
so far crowns this weave and stitch along. Take a look at this beautiful little purse that Vicky made and posted. And Vicky started her post with, well, better late than never, because she was a little bit behind. But take a look at this beauty. Um, so this, of course, is enlarged. So this is a 4x4 four four square. And this is a hexagon that she's using as the flap. Uh, here is the buttonhole from week 5. Here is the design, the backstitch design from week 4. Um, here are the leaves from week 3. So this is like... <laughs> Um, I'm speechless. This is just so perfect. She decided to crochet around uh, the borders with a little bit thinner thread. And, um, you know, the color scheme is, is beautiful. I don't have a picture from the inside, but she even lined the inside of this, of this little pouch. Uh, she said she also likes to quilt. So a little piece of fabric scrap. Um, um, did the job to to create the lining. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece, uh, and I would say um, it, we can definitely label that as a masterpiece. So thank you very much, everybody, for uh, sharing your creations and your creativity, sharing ideas and thoughts and uh, fun and laughter. All right, now let's take a look at our week seven. Again, we want to do uh, the uh, satin stitch and actually we'll do a padded satin stitch and a couching stitch and uh, we will take, uh, we'll talk about it as we get there. Let's take a quick look here at, um, let me see if I can show you a few details here. Um, yeah, that will... That'll do. Okay, so here is Amber's example. And so she had woven a square on the zoom loom. And it's hard to see here, but half of the uh, body is uh, a pattern. And it's uh, over one and under three to make a little pattern. You can use different patterns too. And that gives it a little bit of a tummy look. Um, we're not doing this in today's session because I want to focus on the stitchery, but I wanted to mention it here so that you have an idea. Amber made the wings here uh, using a homespun. And she said, well, this is a great opportunity to use yarns that are a little bit too thick for weaving or yarns that you just have a little ends of that are too thick. And here, I think the homespun works very well. So this is done in padded uh, satin stitch which means first we do one layer in this direction and then we cover it in this direction. We'll take a look later. Um, also we have here the eyes and this is where we will be couching and uh, I'll show you an example when we get to it but couching is when you pretty much it always means you tie something down. So what we will do here is we will lay those little circles and then we'll stitch over those yarns to hold them down. Again, this will give it a nice 3D effect. When we're done with the two eyes, we will add the nose again with padded satin stitch. We'll make a little nose in this direction and then we will cover it in this direction. We'll also uh, finish the eyes with a little bit of satin stitch for the pupils inside. All right, that's all there is to us. Uh, now, when we'll start with the wings, and what Amber suggested is that we do the, uh, she suggested freeform to draw one wing freeform, and then count the stitches across and do the other one or copy it to the other wing. Um, I took a little shortcut for those who don't want to do the, uh, the counting, and I'll just show you here. Um, I will provide in our worksheet a template, okay? And the template looks something, let's see, looks something like this. And you can either cut out a square or the hexagon, and then you cut out the wing area and the eyes right here. And then you get something like this as a template. And then we will use the fabric marker 
to mark the fabric. This should be a little bit easier. I've tried it out right here, so uh, let me show you quickly what we will be doing today. Um, the instructions will be the same on the zoom loom and on the hexagon on the turtle loom. So today we will be working on the turtle loom uh, to make this little owl. And so after you have seen Amber's suggestion, here's what we will be working today. Uh, we will first work one wing, and this is padded satin stitch, then the other wing right here. Then I will show you a few tricks that Amber and I discussed for the eyes uh, right here. And then I think next we can do the pupils, which is just simple satin stitch. And then we will add the nose, and that's, that will be it. All right. Um, you can see here that I changed from white fabric to bone fabric. Uh, my initial idea was to use all natural colors to make it really look like uh, an owl. Uh, I didn't want, but I didn't want to go too. Uh, I needed the contrast to be able to show you, and I didn't want to go too dark. Um, so that the video is still of good quality. So what you see here, well, you can see that's probably an extension from the 70s. Um, but um, the, the idea here is you can use any colors you want. I have chosen these colors um, so that I can demonstrate the different things. Um, but please feel free to make your own little owl absolutely please 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 all right looking forward to see uh hopefully a lot of very creative little owls all right let's get started so uh instructions are the same cut out the um the template for your owl uh, or do freehand you can do both today i will show you how to use the template and we will be working on the hexagon so let me just put this aside here and we leave these two here for reference. Um, and there is my needle right here. So uh, first you cut out the template and um, put it right on the, so leave your fabric, cut out the template, put it on, and then use a marker for this. For this work, actually, it's not really that super important that you use a marker that's easily to remove because we will cover those stitches. Um, and then let me see here. Can we please zoom in? Thank you. All right. Uh, this way I can have it here on the table. So have the template here and hold it slightly down. And let's do the wing first right here. So you can use any marker. If you have a marker that goes away, that's of course better. Uh, but if you don't have a marker handy, that um, you can just use any any other marker. So I have done one wing and an eye. I'm doing the second eye right now, right here. Okay, and the second wing. So again, you can do everything freehand, but if you don't feel comfortable doing freehand, just use the templates from the worksheet as I'm doing here. Well, let's see if you can see this. So here's the wing and the eyes and the other wing. All right, for uh, my demonstration, I'm using the Lion brand uh, bonbons again. And uh, these are the brights colors. This is a little bit fuzzier and thicker. Um, it is still not thick enough. It's not as thick as, for example, the homespun. So if you have a thick yarn that you would like to use, absolutely go ahead. What I will do today is I will use this yarn and I use it double thickness. So I will measure twice the length and then use it like this. Okay, so you can do that if you have, for example, soft yarn or any other yarn, even worsted weight yarn, uh, go ahead and use it double. All right. For the wing, we need uh, three times the length of our ruler down here. So which makes it 36 inches, one, 
two, three. And since I'm doubling it, I'm using the double lengths for it. So that would be like this. And this will be enough for one wing. You say, wow, that's a lot of yarn for one wing. Uh, that's true, absolutely. Um, but it's also, <coughs> excuse me, um, it also needs to, we want to have it puffing up a little bit. Let me see if I can show you this. Uh, you see here how this puffs up. It's almost a little bit 3D. And this is what we want to achieve with this so-called padded satin stitch. All right, so here's our thread, and I will anchor it at the bottom, at the bottom left black nail. On uh, the zoom loom, you could use any nail down here at the bottom left, and then we bring the needle to the back of the loom. Let's see, a little bit fuzzy. Okay, and here we are ready to go. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to keep just one strand here on the side unworked, and I'll show you what I mean by this. Here, you see here, you can see here there's one strand that I, or one thread that I did not work. Um, this will give us a better opportunity later on to uh, make a very nice uh, connection to the next hexagon or to the next square. Um, and it's really not giving in to much of the, uh, of the design itself. All right, padded satin stitch. The first order is that we will make the pads and we will make this by vertical stitches all across the uh, the the wing. Okay, let me just move this up here. As beneficial as this is, I always forget doing it when I prep it. Here we go. All right. So uh, we come on out on up on the inside of the marking. Again, we leave one thread. So after the first thread, we come out at the inside of the marking right here. Let me show you this. Can you see this? All right. So there's one thread. Oh, actually I have two threads. Let me fix this. Yeah, that's better. So there's one thread between the nails and the thread right now, right here. Okay. And now on the inside of the marking. Since the markings are purple, it's a little bit hard to see with purple yarn, but let's take a look. So now I go up vertically to about the inside of the purple marking up here to go down, which is pretty much a long straight stitch, okay? And I continue doing this along the, the wing. And if you have to pierce the yarn, that's fine. Just, just go ahead and pierce it. This layer is not really super important to, to get it absolutely precise um, because this will just be the padding. By the way, Amber had a very good uh, suggestion. You could, instead of making those vertical stitches, you could cut out a small piece of felt in that size and lay it onto the fabric as the padding, all right? So one more right here. And you see all I'm doing is uh, straight stitches on the inside of the marking. And we get something that looks like this, okay? All right, so next we will start covering those stitches. We cover the padding, so we will work down horizontally. We start here at the top and work our way down and now we want to work on the outside so on the opposite side of the um of the purple markings or markings mine are purple yours may be all kinds of colors so and we do the same thing 
um, we do straight stitches. Let's just see. Okay. And, but this time we are covering, uh, we are covering here. So we're going a little bit on the outside of the markings, but we will still come down uh, one thread before the nails. You can do here just one thread uh, or one stitch per row, or you can make them a little bit more dense. Uh, do not be afraid to pierce the threads once in a while. I'm not sure if you can see this here. I'm trying to pierce it right now for the next stitch. That's perfectly fine because you really want to cover the whole area. It doesn't matter that the stitches are uh, aligned with the fabric in any way. Uh, most importantly, it's just that it's all covered. Since the padding is worked in the same color as the stitches that we're doing now, it actually makes it even a little bit easier. All right, so this is probably the widest point, and don't be afraid that these stitches are a little bit longer. It will take to, it will, you need to get used to it a little bit to make those really big stitches after doing all those little stitches that we have done before with the back stitch and even with the cross stitch. Uh, these are probably the largest stitches that we have made so far. Work loosely, don't tuck it too tight. You really want to build this uh, 3D cushion uh, very nicely here. Okay, just a few more stitches. We are now at the area where the, the stitches get a little bit smaller. And yeah, we probably have room for one or two more stitches. The other thing is, um, you know, if you want to work very accurately for this design, um, it really doesn't matter well, it does matter, but it's not really difficult to be very accurate uh, because what you want to achieve is the shape. And as long as the shape looks anything similar to what you see right here, you will be fine. So, all you, and you can pat it down a little bit. Um, the lighting here is not optimal, but so here is already our first wing, okay? Um, just so that we uh, the back actually looks pretty interesting too. The back looks like the front because with the straight stitches you just go around and around and around. So at the moment, not that it matters, but at the moment the back looks exactly like the front. Let me put this down here and then we can just cut this off. So here's our first wing and so this almost looks like it's waving hi. So here is the owl and here's our first wing. Um, yep, you guessed right. Next order is to make the second wing the same story. One, two, three. If you have six, very thick yarn, uh, 36 inches. If you have thin yarn and you want to double it, uh, you need twice as much. And we can thread it right here. make the slips it's not slip stitch slip knot here we go and yes you're guessing right um we anchor this thread at the bottom right black nail which would be the bottom right nail any of those down here if you work on the zoom loom all right very good let's get started um Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, there is really nothing new to it at this point. Uh, we anchored the yarn and brought it to the back of our work right here. And then it's the same thing. Uh, keep, the, keep one thread between the stitching and the nail so that you, it will be easier to make the, the seaming later on. 
and then we first start making the vertical stitches that will serve as the padding okay and I just want to repeat a few things here um, these are all big stitches they don't have to be perfect because it's just the padding uh, they should be on the inside of the purple markings see here's where I come out this is about the inside of the purple markings and here we go because we will cover them later with the horizontal stitches uh, you may pierce the threads if you want uh, let me see if I can do this here yeah here so here am I piercing one of the threads um, vertically work one stitch per row let me show you this here so there's like one two three rows and each of those has one two three stitches so don't pierce those um, they are actually a really good guideline for uh, how much padding to work okay <clears throat> if those wings don't work out or, or don't get exactly the same shape this is actually something very natural so I would, wouldn't worry about that too much they will come out close enough no matter what you do and you can also uh, do a lot with the cover stitches later on um, yes the last stitch and this is just a very tiny stitch right and here we are so we have the padding completed right here and the next order is that we will cover those padding stitches with the horizontal stitches that make the final uh, look of everything all right let's see where we start here maybe a little bit lower than on the other side and I want to pierce here and then we go yeah okay I think that looks good I'm just you know eyeing about it does not have to be exactly the same height but eyeing about the same <coughs> to achieve the same height <coughs> excuse me for the covering stitches again uh, make sure that you have at least one stitch for each of for each row and sometimes you may want to make an extra stitch uh, but we should have at least one stitch per per row right here all right and again these stitches will be rather large but that's okay uh, because we want to have that's why it's called the padded satin stitch so there are two components to it number one the padding gives it a nice 3d effect and then the satin stitch is really a very very much covering stitch uh, to to the game so um, there are different satin stitches uh, or variations available um, for example today we are making the padded satin stitch uh, you can also make the satin stitch without the padding this is what you saw before on the two blouses they were made without the padding um, but you probably also noticed on the blouses there are um, you can make the pattern stitches that they just uh, get into each other so not that big but you do it halfway and then you do another way and the next one is a little bit over so that they kind of look like they are like T's that that meet each other um, so there are a whole bunch of variations you can just google it if you're curious about it all right let's see here this is the time when we will reduce the wingspan with making smaller stitches 
as well. Almost out of yarn. Well, we have we have plenty, so we're not. It's not dramatic, but I think this might be our last stitch right here. Maybe one more to pad. No, this this is actually. I think this is pretty good. Let me just twist this a little bit so that you can see the padding and you can really see the 3D padding. All right, and again, we'll bring the end of the yarn to the outside of the loom right here. And here are, ta-da, the two wings. All right, next we will tackle the eyes. And this is where the couching stitch comes in. Let me see if I can quickly find this here. Here is the couching stitch, and I'm just holding this up so that you can see a little bit. Couching, every time you hear that phrase, it pretty much, um, okay, this is Gabby talk, but if you tie something down with another thread, it's couching. So you can see here there are two threads uh, like across, and then the pink thread pretty much just ties it down. And here's what it looks like when you're done stitching. So you tie it down. It's a very easy stitch, actually. And instead of using, uh, you know, you, what are you tying down? You can pretty much tie down everything. And I have a little sample here that I quickly want to show you. Um, things that you can tie down. Um, you could use, for example, a feather and tie it down. Or you could use a few strands of um, raffia. You can use the raffia to, to tie it down, but you could also use raffia to um, as the means that you want to tie down, something like that, okay? So, um, other things. Here are some beads. So, you could just tie down a little string of beads, something like that. And you can decorate it like this, all right? Let me put this like here. Um, or if you have uh, a pretty ribbon. Let's see. Oh, this is stretchy. I didn't know that. So, and these are all Hobby Lobby leftovers from this summer. So here's a little piece of ribbon that we can put up here. And then you can take, um, this is like just floss. I'm just doing, this is a quick and dirty. I actually just wanted to show this to you. But since we're here, I might as well just uh, tie it down for you. Um, this is like a, a dark yellow floss. That is not cooperating. Here we go. All right, and so couching. I'm just putting this on anywhere and going to the right side. Okay, just so this is <laughs> what I'm showing you here is not planned. Um, I'm just I just decided that instead of showing you uh, what you can do, um, how to do it. So here is this little bead piece, and um, I just like it the way it's it's curling up here. So couching means. I'm just tying it down with, I'm using some embroidery floss. This can be pretty much anything. Um, you can couch, make the couch stitch very tight uh, to cover something completely. But since here we want to see the, um, the little beads, I'm just couching them down in, at some certain points where I want to secure them so that they don't run away. So that's all there is to it. So just very, um, you know, this is a little bit similar to the, the stitch that you used with the lazy days, daisy stitch when you, when you uh, tied down the loop. That's the same stitch that we're making here. Uh, 
to so really just enough to hold things in place. So maybe one or two more stitches here on the beads and then we'll so that's enough, just so that it doesn't run away or that it stays in place the way you like it. Okay, and then let's do the raffia. With a few stitches here, and I'll start in the middle so that it doesn't run away. Can you see this? So what I wanted to show you here is on the one hand, yeah, this is the couching or this is how you work couching, but also you can be very creative with this stitch because you can tie down pretty much anything that otherwise is hard to work with. All right, so here we go. Let's do another stitch over here. All right, and let's add the feather. The feather is very fluffy, which is kind of a dull thing. Oh, we could actually, I just had an idea, we could couch the feather with a cross stitch. Here we go. Oh, this looks so cute. Let's do one more. A little bit farther down here. All right, this is too feathery. And then we have this little arrow up here. So couching, uh, you can use the same stitch to uh, tie down some some ribbon and you can oh I just lost my needle here let's see if we can turn that arrow into a little bow so we could just um, you know with a few stitches secure this little arrow to make it look cute but I want to see if I can do one security stitch. See if we can turn that into a little bow that sticks out. So an arrow. We're not sure if this works. We'll see. Oh, it looks like a little bit like a broken arrow, but if we can tug it in place, I think you get the idea. So uh, for couching, uh, it's not just tying down, uh, you know, another thread, but you, you definitely can be creative. So you can probably uh, cut this to shape here. Let me just clean this up. So what you could do with this is you could glue this to a greeting card and have a very unique individual greeting card ready to go. All right. So just with a few couching stitches. Um, Remember, couching means you tie something down. And usually this is of a thread, but it can be pretty much anything, as you can see here. All right? So, um, okay, this was a little bit more elaborate than planned. Let me clean up my big mess here. And then we go back to uh, couching our owl face. Wow, we made a big mess in a hurry here. All right, let's take a look. So couching, what you would usually do, and we will use the color green here. Let me take a look. Uh, we will need 
um, four times the length of a ruler. One, two, three, four. And since I'm doubling, this is probably the longest thread that we will ever work with, but um, it will shrink very quickly. You will see that. Um, <clears throat> Let's make our slip knot. And just so that it's out of the way, I'm anchoring that slip knot here at the top of the loom. And that would be on your on your zoom loom, it would be somewhere here in the middle of the long top side. Okay, just so that it's out of the way. And then we bring the yarn to the back of the work like this. All right, here we are ready to go. All right, um, what you usually do with the couching, uh, if you want, so we want to couch here, you can see here this green area, which is a ring. And to couch something like that, you would lay down, and I'm showing you this here, you would lay down um, whatever you want to couch in a circle and then you would tie it down. Here's actually a spiral, so they keep on going. But the idea is that you would um, lay down the circle and then you would couch it down. Since um, this is such a tiny area here, um, Amber came up with a brilliant idea or a brilliant suggestion. So let me just come up right here. What she does is she makes some of the couching stitches first and then she lays out the circle. Let me show you what she means. So first she makes four stitches <clears throat> and these are uh, little straight stitches like the stitches that you would make for couching. Uh, she makes four stitches um, at first that look so two vertically and two horizontally. Let me see. Oh, there's one. There we go. Uh, no, this is still not. Let me see. There's one thread that's not cooperative, and I want to find it now before it gets too thick down there. Aha, here it is. So here we go. Here's our first stitch. And this is... All right, so um, we are making four stitches, two horizontal and two vertical. I'm actually just going around. It looks like a cross that has that is open in the middle. Uh, so let me do this. Oh, yeah, I have to stay in the camera view. Here is number three. And we do one more, number four. And this is actually a really cool idea. So thank you, Amber, for bringing this up. Uh, so you make a few of those couching stitches first. And Amber suggests to make four stitches like this, um, two vertical, two horizontal. They look like a cross that is open in the center. All right, and now what we do is we will lay, in quotes, um, the threads that we want to couch. So bring it to the top, and now we go through. Can you see that? So I came out here in the middle near one of those uh, uh, couching stitches that we made, and now I'm stitching underneath the couching stitch. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever you suit. And so now you lay that circle that we need as buffer. Uh, work very loosely.
all right so work very loosely and you can pull it out a little bit like this you see now so this is our first circle and that will be the thread that we will be couching soon I suggest make at least two of those so I go around one more time to lay another round one and don't pull too tight two three four can you see this so now we have two circles of the green yarn that go under those four stitches those four couching stitches that we made before that's a super easy way to uh, position the eye perfectly and get the right tension all right and now what we will be doing is now we will do the couching stitches so we're going all around with very generous short straight stitches and couch those two rounds that we just made don't pull too tight um, it's really easy to do because uh, we are using the same color here and what you need to do is make the stitches very close to each other so that it really looks like the two circles that we made before are completely covered it's about one stitch uh, for over each thread so advance over one thread every time uh, they will of course be a little bit tighter in the center but that's okay and you really can't go wrong with with anything you will be doing uh, you can pierce the fabric if you want oh by the way I did not mention that before but um, if you prefer if you to 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 pierce the fabric for these stitches you can actually uh, for the satin stitch use a needle uh, that has a tip so a needle that's not blunt um, that's perfectly fine and, and appropriate um, if you don't have one um, continue to work with the needle that you have been using so far perfectly appropriate and doable no problem alright so you can see how this eye comes along here um, you can't I think I already said it but I just want to say it one more time you can't go wrong uh, with with this keep the stitches closely together see that they are about to uh, be in line next to each other um, but you know even if they're a little bit out of sync uh, that's absolutely not a problem because it's all natural and it will just give your little owl personality so we're almost there we just need to cover yeah maybe two more stitches right here until we come back to the starting point okay here we go yes one more stitch um, also you can it's hard to make too many stitches because you do want to achieve a 3d effect with this design so um, if you make a one stitch too many not a problem at all so um, trying to hold this close to the camera here so that you can see the circle and you can see the 3d effect uh, the center we will fill that in shortly with the pupil which is just uh, regular satin stitches um, but here is another padded here's our first padded eye alright so guess what we're going to do next yes we're going over to the other side wiggle wiggle can you see and 
we will do exactly the same thing on the other side. So here you can see the circle and we will make the four stitches that open cross or the cross that's open in the center. Start with the four stitches. Work them loosely so that it's easy to get under them um, when you work the Th the, the rounds that you want to uh, that you want to couch. Um, be generous with your stitches. This one is a little bit tiny but still okay. And so make sure that you have two verticals and two horizontals. Whoops, come here. Yeah, this is probably a little bit too far. Let me see if I can undo that. Because we need some space for the nose or for the beak later on. Here we go. Yeah, I think this will be better. All right, so here are our four stitches. The light green actually showed better in the lighting that I was working when I prototyped it. But I think you can still see it, yeah. So one, two, three, four. And now we will just start somewhere um, and come up and make two circles through those couching stitches. So it's pretty much couching stitch backwards, but for our purpose, it's ideal. Um, and you know, in the end, you don't see anything anyway, because nobody is telling you or the owl will not tell you the sequence in which you make those stitches. So one more. And remember to work with very little tension because you want it to get that 3D effect that it's really puffy on the top of the fabric. Okay, so here is your first circle and um, I will actually make sure Pull it back a little bit like this so that it's really nice and round. When you couch it down, you can always control the final tension of it. Um, so better, better too loose than too tight is the message. Let's do one more round right here. If you work with two threads like I do, uh, make sure that the threads are about the same tension. Sometimes one is longer than the other and just adjust it for each stitch as you go to prevent um, that they are peeking out afterwards. All right, there we go. One more to bring us back to the beginning. And you can see here now that we have those two circles that we now are going to couch down. All right. So let's get started on this. Um, you can try because because you uh, used the the template and you marked the eyes. Um, those eyes should come out very similar in size and shape. Um, if you did a freehand with each stitch, you can control and you know just check back and see where you are, and if the eyes still you know go well together. Um, if it's not perfect, again, no problem. All right. So you probably you know this this is a good example for folk art embroidery where things don't have to be uh, perfect, but they make a very cute picture. So I think that's a good comparison to what we're doing right here. Uh, remember that you want to have at least one stitch or one, th one stitch per uh, opening between the threads you may do once in a while an extra stitch to just puff it up a little bit more. Um, with the yarn that I have it's actually not needed and depending on the yarn that you will be using um, 
just use common sense and and look what it looks like uh, so a good rule of thumb is to have one stitch per thread and maybe like one or two extras but that would be all all right we are on the second half of the second eye and you can already see how this thing starts staring at us let me see we have at least two more stitches here and I make them very loosely yeah I think I want to pierce it right here to make it nice and round and not square how's that? Ah, I want to make one more right here and that brings us back to the beginning here we go all right doesn't look too shabby does it all right I suggest bring your thread here out to the side you'll have some some extra uh, it really all depends on the yarn that you are using whether you need it or not uh, maybe for 48 inches is a little bit overdoing it you can also um, work in in two steps make one eye at a time and then the other one um, I decided to do work both eyes at the same time uh, I found the the length of the thread acceptable to work with um, but that's personal preference really all right so now we have two choices we could make the beak or which is another padded uh, satin stitch or we can make the pupils I will go for the pupils at this point and for those we need not that much it's just a few stitches of satin stitch here uh, Amber also suggested you could consider making a star stitch a star stitch is pretty much two cross stitches uh, on top of each other um, I tried it out I do like the satin stitch for the pupils better so we're using um, just let's see one and a half so about 18 inches is probably all you need and plenty uh, if you work with a single strand double that if you work with a double strand like I do so 18 inches and then you make your slip knot right here and you can I put mine up here so uh, you know anywhere here to the left of the right of the green on your zoom lens it's like put it every, anywhere here or here um, we're doing this we're distributing those those anchored yarns around the looms um, just for the purpose that they don't get tangled it makes my life much easier later on when we um, when we sew in the threads right bring your yarn to the back of your work right here and you know actually I think this is really cute those little anchored ends they, they look like like fringed hair so uh, and you will see in the worksheet uh, that we use that for the exit strategy all right uh, what we will do here is now we will fill in these little circles in the center of the eye on both sides let's start right here on the on the left side and all you need to do is just make a few it's almost like tiny straight stitches of varying lengths so on the side you make one that's a little bit uh, shorter you start with a short one and then you make one that's a little bit bigger like this and then you can make one more that's a little bit shorter again so this will look like a little dot and will fill in that center circle nicely okay so it's pretty much like three straight stitches of different lengths here you go take a look uh, do not pull them in too tight um, and then you can correct it with your needle a little bit to make it really stand out like that we have strange lighting today um, but I think you can see it a little bit here alright so 
Uh, now we just go over to the other eye and con repeat the same steps. So make one short straight stitch. I'm doing them, uh, doing them vertically, but you can do them any any way you want. And then I make one straight stitch in the middle. That's a little bit longer. Right here. Don't pull it in too tight. And then I make one more straight stitch, a short straight stitch to the right of that. All right, so here you go. Let's see if I put this down. Yeah, actually this way it actually shows better. Sorry about the lighting, there's always something. Um, then we just take the yarn and bring it to the front because that's all there is to it for the pupils. Here we go. And you can see how our little owl is growing here and starting to look more and more like its friend here on the right. Um, last not least, all we need to do is making the beak. And you don't find the beak on the, on the template because I will show you uh, how we do the beak without the template, uh, we will use the eyes for the orientation of it, all right? So for the beak, I'm using about two times the length of our ruler, that is 24 inches, okay? And since I need to double it, I do this. And I'm using yellow here. Again, remember, you can choose any colors you want. I have chosen those colors pretty much to be able to uh, demonstrate to you um, what we are doing. And I hope that even with the strange lighting conditions, um, you can see it. All right. Um, wherever you not did anchor the orange thread, is where I want you to anchor the yellow one. So if you on your zoom loom anchor the orange one, orange yarn here, I want you to anchor the yellow yarn over here. Again, this is not a hard fact, um, but it makes things convenient and pre convenient and prevents things from uh, getting tangled too much. If you have that much yarn. Um, that you are working with, um, it easily can can crouch up at the at the back of your work. Uh, right now, ours looks like this, so this is pretty decent. But if you don't have the ends coming out like what we do, they could all pile up here and on the back, and that would it could potentially look pretty ugly. Okay, all right. For the beak, let me quickly show you here what we will be doing. Uh, so here's our little beak, and what I'm doing is here, see where the eyes end? This is where I want the beak to start, okay? Again, this is padded satin stitch, so we will first work stitches that go vertically, and then we will cover them horizontally. That makes it actually pretty easy, because I can show you what we will do first. First, just estimate uh, here's here's the bottom you can see here is the bottom line of your eyes and just estimate a point in between where you want to get started that might be about here you can pierce the yarn or not and just come up here okay and then you go down um, about like four to five um, rows to make the first stitch for the padding, something like this, okay? So if it looks like that, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going over five threads down here, all right? And this will be the maximum length of the beak. So this is here, the stitch goes right in the, down the center of the nose. This makes it really easy to size and position the nose. So that's another benefit of those padded stitches. And then you just work your way to the side, first on one side, 
one stitch per uh, per thread so you skip one thread and then you go over you can keep you can maintain the line here at the top and just go one stitch shorter with each one thread shorter with each stitch something like this okay and I'm only making two stitches in that direction and two stitches in the other direction which will give me enough uh, playroom to uh, cover them up with the horizontal and final stitches okay so let's do this here we go that already looks a little bit like a pretty cute beak doesn't it all right here we go so um, now we will cover those stitches with horizontal stitches to complete the beach the beak make sure that you stitch on the outside of everything that you stitched so far so I'm just going over here and I'm just skipping one thread right here and then going to the right side one thread over where I stitch the padding and this is my first beak final beak stitch now I go I do one horizontal line for each row so skip one thread and in the next row you make a stitch skip one thread and stitch and when it gets closer you go closer skip one stitch uh, one thread and stitch and here they get very tiny but cute skip one thread and you know get, make them closer moving closer and I think and you can just wiggle and puff a little bit I think I actually want to leave it like this let me see what do you think I think that looks cute all right here we go and you can the nice thing is with the padded stitches you can adjust with your fingers a little bit what you want them to look like and so that would be all here all right and now we can take off the work so that we can um, here's one thing uh, that I want to point out every time I suggest that on the um, zoom loom as well as on the hexagon loom take off those anchored stitches first because if you try to slide them off with the fabric it could happen that they get stuck and then you pull your um, your embroidery and you definitely don't want to risk that you put so much effort into it so I just go around and I do the same thing on the um, on the zoom loom as well I know the zoom loom doesn't have any heads but if you just slide it off uh, it can still pucker the embroidery floss so uh, we definitely don't want any of that okay let me just take this off here and then all that's left for us to do is to sew in the or weave in the ends on the back oh I'm out of sorry so taking off our work carefully and there are just a lot of threads at this point you know we are, there are four colors and it's thick yarn so but I will show you in a minute so here's our little owl um, so this is what the back looks like it's not perfect but without um, bringing the thread to the front it would be trust me it would be much worse so and now it's actually you see how how you have on the front the puffs and on the back you have the puffs so if you are now careful what you can do is 
so in those ends I'm just doing this here like quick and dirty but you can achieve with the padded satin stitch you can achieve a really nice looking back which would be almost good enough to make it uh, if you starch it um, this would be good enough for an ornament or you could just weave and you will see that as the exit strategy a plain um, motif either hexagon or square and uh, turn this into a little pocket pal and uh, whether you want to sneak out or you're not or not um, I really like the idea of the little pocket pals um, because I know that there are a lot of little children out there that would appreciate them um, I will not bother you too much more here. I'm just showing you here. The, you can clean up the back really nicely. It's very puffy, all right? But you can clean it up very nicely. I don't want to bother you here with, with uh, weaving in all the ends right now. You know how it goes. So let's just take a look at our little owl right here. Isn't that cute? I think I like it off the loom as much as I like it on the loom. So here is the inspiration that we received from Amber. Here's our sample owl on the loom. Here's our sample owl off the loom. Can you zoom out please? Thank you. And so this will conclude. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Here was the yarn that we used today. And I'm putting this back into the view here so that you can see the template. So this was week seven with all its tools making a cute little owl. All right, happy owling. I'm looking forward to seeing some cute owls coming up. Uh, please, please post. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment or email me at gabi at texasgabi.com. I'm pretty sure that by now you know where to find me. Um, and then I'm looking forward to seeing you one more time next week for week eight when we will put all our treasures together thank you for listening and watching auf wiedersehen